What up, nerds? Welcome back to the Nerdy Narrative. My name is Leslie Smith, and I'm here to talk to you today about the book that I just finished reading, and that is Full Moon by Jim Butcher. Full Moon is book two of the Dresden Files, and the Dresden Files are about Harry Dresden, who is basically a wizard for hire. This is the second time that I have read through the series of books that are currently available. He's, he's also a detective. He's a wizard who is basically a detective. He just uses magic to solve his whodunits. And what was really hilarious, I don't know if you all saw it, but if you're a Butcher fan and you recently saw the trailer for Peace Talks, well on April 1st, they released one where every scene Harry, the actor Harry has on a different hat. So, I'm going to join in. Got to take my clip out. <sighs> Madness curls. That's about as uh, That's about as good as it's going to get for a detective hat because it's all I got. It's a little sparkly, you know. It's a it's a previous New Year's Eve hat. <laughs> it used to light up, but I guess the batteries died. I'm very sad. So, any rate, so now that I have my detective hat on, we can continue talking about Full Moon. The reason why, so my reread of the Dresden Files lined up perfectly with the Owl's Magical Readathon, in that I needed to read a book that contained a shapeshifter. A book or a series that had a shapeshifter in it. This book is where Harry meets his first werewolves and he also and there's a mystery surrounding the werewolf community that he did not realize existed in Chicago at the time. But yes, so this book, the reading of this book satisfied my transfiguration exam. Here is the synopsis on the back of the book. Let me have my, my detective glasses on. Business has been slow. Okay, business has been dead. And not even of the undead variety. You would think Chicago would have a little more action for the only professional wizard in the phone book. But lately, Harry Dresden hasn't been able to dredge up any kind of work, magical or mundane. But just when it looks like he can't afford his next meal, a murder comes along that requires his particular brand of supernatural expertise. A brutally mutilated corpse strange looking paw prints a full moon take three guesses and the first two don't count i love that synopsis so most of you know so if you're not aware jim butcher actually began the dresden files basically because his english teacher was giving him shit. so he walked in and like Basically, she's like, oh, you're never going to mount anything, you don't apply yourself, blah, blah, blah. So he walks in with a few chapters of the very first Dresden Files, which is Stormfront. And she was like, you have something here. You, This will sell. And she said, come back with an outline. She meant an outline for the rest of Stormfront. He came back with an outline for 20 books in the series. And she's like, um... The first three books of the Dresden Files are, they are not as good as the rest of the series, but they are still really enjoyable. A lot of people will recommend that people start with the fourth book in the Dresden Files. I still don't. I still say start at the beginning because it's endearing to watch as Jim Butcher gets good at the world building and the character development. It's just a joy to watch as it grows and gets better through each of these first few books. And he's really starting to flesh out Harry's inner circle. But I mean, the copy I have here is the mass market paperback. I cannot, for the, I mean, I've just been having a really tough time trying to get these in hardback edition. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to, but today is not that day. So it's basically just a guy in a hat with a staff and a black coat nothing really to write home about. They did a much better job on the synopsis. So where the cover's not going to pull me in, 
the synopsis was definitely good. I enjoyed it. It just really comes across with the Dresden snark and I loved it. Would I recommend this book? Hell yeah! Jim Butcher is one of my favorite authors. I'm probably gonna give every book he ever writes five stars even though I haven't read them all. Some of the things about Full Moon that I really enjoyed. For some reason when I was reading this book I really took notice of how Harry makes potions. You know, it wasn't eye of a newt, tail of a rat, wing from a bat. I mean, you know, in a leaky cauldron in his lab. It was really cool. Like, I really felt like Jim put some thought into this. Just for an example. I gotta get more. <laughs> Excuse me. So right now, Harry's making a stimulant potion. And these are the ingredients. A morning donut for taste. A cock's crow for hearing fresh soap for smell, bits of a washcloth for touch, and a beam of dawn sunshine for sight, a to-do list for the mind, and a bit of bright cheerful music for the spirit, and the potion was simmering along nicely. I mean, that just sounds believable, and I really enjoy when they take, when an author is able to take something supernatural and make it believable. I mean, that sounds so believable. Like that sounds like something a regular person could make. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to put that in words other than I just really thought that was interesting. So when you're reading about supernatural beings and things with magic and power, you know, a lot of times when you read about wizards, you just read about the wizarding things that they do, you're not ever really drawn to remember that they are humans. And so like in this scene, one of Harry's potions that he made works. And Jim writes in the how he felt, the victory, the accomplishment, the sense of accomplishment, the pride, how he celebrated his success and just made him so human, which I think is a, such an important thing to remember about Harry. Harry values human life. And I just really loved it. I felt my face stretch in a victorious smile. The potion had worked. I was inside. I had to suppress an urge to break into a soft shoe routine. Sometimes being able to use magic was so cool. I mean, that just, I love that. Uh, I don't know how to put it in words other than I really enjoy things like that. So as I mentioned, this is where Harry meets werewolves. And as I've also mentioned before talking about the Dresden Files, the thing that I love that Jim Butcher does is he tweaks the supernatural beings to make them just a little different than every other vampire, werewolf, and warlock on the block. And what you discover in Full Moon in this world you can be born a werewolf. You can be forcefully changed into a werewolf by someone more magically powerful. And you can also be gifted a werewolf pelt, belt that will change you into a werewolf. And each one is a little different from the other. Harry, are, he's meeting these different types and learning the dangers of the different types I don't want to, to say any more about the werewolf. I would love for you to read and learn about those yourself so you can have your own opinion of what you think about them, but I really enjoyed the differences. So another thing I liked is in this book, Harry meets his own subconscious and they have a conversation and it was so hilarious. But basically, Harry is passed out and his subconscious takes the opportunity to give him a swift kick in the tail about some things going on in Harry's life and some things that he just hasn't, he noticed, but he did not focus on to realize some of the things that he was trying to find out was staring him in the face. I thought that was really interesting little meeting between the two of them. We get a little more world building into this one. Um, Butcher is slowly building on the supernatural that he has begun in book one. You know, in book one, we met the Red Court vampires. Book two, we've got werewolves. Who knows what book three is? I can't wait to find out. So as usual, Harry's investigating a murder and 
you know, as the synopsis mentioned, there were some really large paw prints. We've got werewolves involved. We've got different types of werewolves. Harry is trying to determine out of all these different kinds of beings that he has met, who could be responsible for these deaths and why. And, and part of that, and so while he's trying to solve this case, one of the things he does is, since he's never met werewolves before, he's trying to do research. He's trying to learn as much as possible about these different types to determine who might be the culprit or culprits. So one of the things he does in his lab is he summons a demon. And from what I understand, the White Council, who is the governing body for the magical world, they're against it. Like that is a big no-no to summon a demon because, I mean, there's just so much that can go wrong if your circle is not prepared and closed properly and the demon gets out. I mean, first thing the demon's gonna do is whack you. Uh, so at any rate, it's a uh, highly frowned upon, but Harry does it anyway. And the demon's name, I can't say the full name, but Harry shortens it and calls him Chauncey, which I just thought was hilarious. Harry summons Chauncey. He's got some information from gentleman Johnny Marcone, who has made an appearance in this book. So uh, I imagine Marcone is just gonna be a, a normal player in the plots and schemes and cases that Harry's gonna find himself in in Chicago. But at any rate, Harry's questioning Chauncey. And Chauncey's price is to obtain another one of Harry's names. So he already knows him as Harry Dresden. So Harry gives him Blackfield. So your full name, said correctly with its correct infl inflection, gives magical powers to whoever possesses it. So now Harry's told him another name in, in exchange for information. So now Chauncey knows Harry Blackstone Dresden. And I don't, I caught that when they were talking about it, he was like, oh, Chauncey was like, oh, isn't that like a illusionist, a wizard, a magician, something like that? And Harry's like, yeah, my dad was a magician and, you know, he was big fans and, of, you know, these guys, whatever, whatever, Harry Houdini and whoever Blackstone was. And I thought that was very foolish of Harry because, okay, well, there's only so many of these guys. Like, it's only a matter of time before Chauncey figures out Copperfield and puts it all together. Now he still will have to know the proper inflection, but it's just a matter of time. So I feel like we'll see Chauncey again and he'll have figured out Harry's complete name. So as they were wrapping up their conversation, Chauncey, like his job as a demon is to win souls over for the underworld. And of course he tries with Dresden. And, you know, Harry's like, no, I'm not interested, quit asking. But at the end of the conversation, he kind of lets slip uh, that he knows who Harry's mother and father were and that they did not die of natural causes, they were murdered. And so he's like, you know, you promise me your soul, I'll tell you all about it. And, you know, Harry's very tempted, but it keeps himself from doing it at the last minute. Uh, we'll be interested to know more because Harry has been led to believe that his mother died in childbirth, and I believe he, and I, and he thinks his father died, um, basically of natural causes, heart attack, something along those lines. So now he's questioning that, but he just kind of, there's, it's just briefly touched on here. So I feel like in a figure we'll find more about that later. This is my favorite Wizarding World to be in. Harry Potter is gonna be my, my close second, but I love this world. I love Harry. I've been in some conversations with people who had issue with how Jim Butcher writes concerning Harry and women. And as a woman, I don't find anything wrong with how Harry is with women. I mean, he is, he's old school. He's one that he likes to pay when you go on a date. He always saves the damsel in distress. He holds the door open. If a good looking woman walks in the room, he notices. If he's talking to an attractive female and she's got a nice chest, he notices. People kind of give Jim Butcher crap for doing that. And I'm saying he's realistic. I'm sorry, but if I'm watching a movie and there's an attractive man in it, I'm like, ooh, yeah, he looks good. Wish he would take off his shirt. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, 
Oh, Harry is looking at a woman's chest. Well, I have a problem with that. No, that's probably what any red-blooded American straight male is going to think. If you haven't read the series and you think you might not like that, I would say don't read them. Keep going, because Harry likes women. Plain and simple. So yeah, I can't wait to get to Grave Peril, which is book three. I do want to finish my owls first and then I'll continue on with the Dresden Files. I hope you enjoyed this little review of book two, Full Moon. Rereading this series is a great way to take up some time while I'm waiting on Peace Talks and Battleground. Got both those bad little babies on pre-order. I cannot wait to read them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.